We got to Montre here. We appreciate you being here. So he wants kind of a feel on how much the portal is going to be used. We've only got uh, the rest of the week into Sunday. That's the deadline, May 1st. And then do you know, Logan, that after May 1st, that's the deadline to enter the transfer portal. Do they have to make a decision on where they're going by a certain date? I think it's somewhere in June. Yep, I believe it's like a it's, month later. Yeah, I believe you got at least a month or so. I don't have that exact date, but I'm yeah. going back to like Dylan Gibbons. I'm trying to remember. He was late last year, and I Jermaine was around this time though, but I forget about Dylan. There was definitely some late guys. I mean, I remember. Kushney, who was a defensive end that I, I I never fully understood that take, but he's, you know, he's long gone, but um, he was really, really late, like almost a couple weeks before fall camp started. So I think it goes pretty late and you can always find a way to beat the system. But yeah, so uh, Montre is asking, do you want me to answer that down there? Sure. Who, uh, who do you see going on? So there, there's, I think there's going to be some, some moves here. I, I don't know in the quarterback realm of things at Florida State what what they're going to do here because you you got your solidified start in Jordan Travis, but I do think Florida State needs to find some depth there and potentially find a guy that can back up Jordan Travis at least that fits the system of Norvell and Coach Atkins' offense. Really, I'm just going to say Coach Norvell's offense, but. Uh, I think there's got to be some depth there. And I think he, they, Florida State really needs a second stringer. I, I'm not too sold uh, on what I saw this spring from Rodemaker and A.J. Duffy for me to feel fine with Jordan Travis going down in the game, which, you know, the majority of last season you saw. And so you got to find some depth there. So we'll keep an eye on the quarterback room. I wouldn't be shocked still if Florida State looks in, in, into the DB market and that just continues to be a thing for them. Um uh, there's a few names being flirted around and, and some rumors, but I don't really want to say anything yet. Uh, but in, in your uh, in your realm, neck of the woods, Mark up there in Ohio State, uh, there's there's some rumors of some guys that are that, that Florida State is, is heavily interested in. You know, you can say heavily interested. They might have just you know knocked on the phone and, and seen what's going on and, and just got to know them, but. Until something starts really going, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. But uh, Florida State, I think, you know, the biggest thing has got to go to offensive line and, and go into tackle. And if they can find a guy that is going to have some promise uh, with experience, I think Florida State's got to go to the tackle spot. You know, one thing about this transfer portal process I've never heard explained, and maybe you've picked up on this from uh, your many conversations with guys that have gone through the process. How involved is that? Are these... Are these guys just sitting down, getting on a database and pretty much just filling out their name and an ID number? Or is it as complicated as filling out a tax form? Or, you know, uh, what, what does that involve going into the transfer portal and putting your name in there? Yeah. Uh, geez, I don't know. It's got to probably be like, Hey, here's, I, it might be as simple as that. Honestly, I want to get, I want to get access to that database so then I can know who's entered first and everything. I don't know how you get the access to that, but um, if anybody's out there that can help me out on that and get me a username and password, that would definitely be essential to our coverage here on the Mark Rogers show in the morning, like Mike is saying. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know how that works, but hopefully one that will enter soon is a tackle that wants to get close to immediate playing time. Because I think not only that, I think Florida State is pretty fine there, your starting group. But depth-wise, I'm worried about it because what we saw in the spring was not so great, and I thought that was one of the weakest parts of the camp and the position groups was that probably that second-string offensive line. It wasn't really too fair, though, because I think Florida State's defensive line is you know a couple of levels ahead of Florida State's offensive line, but you still got to find some pieces to where they can make a damn play and block because it just wasn't pretty. And you're seeing second, third stringers in there be able to run through. You got freshmen coming through and that just cannot happen. That cannot happen. You know, this is where coach Atkins is once again, you know, he's put in a, in a, in a tough spot, but now he's getting his talent in, but it's not going to be immediate this year. You know, he grabbed one of the most talented offensive line classes, if not the most talented offensive line class, in this last runner, uh, in this last turnaround, and 
those are true freshmen coming in. We're not expecting Julian Armella on the highly touted offensive lineman in that group to come in and play right away. But I saw some promising signs from Daughtry Richardson. Uh, you see a little bit from Kaniya Charlton, still got a lot of work to do on his body, but these are guys that are going to be a year two, potentially year three for some of them. But there are some year two guys that I think are going to jump in and, and have some potential uh, next year, but it's not going to happen this year. So you got to, you got to look at the portal.